Didache means teaching, and it is also the shortened title by which we know a document with two longer titles, the teaching of the Twelve Apostles and the teaching of the Lord through the Twelve Apostles to the Nations. The document is a church manual or church order, likely compiled late 1st century, early 2nd century from other sources, possibly even drawing on some of the same sources as the Gospel of Matthew. The author or authors of the document would have probably have been Jewish Christian leaders. Internal descriptions within the text have led some to believe it was written in Syria, while the document's reception by many early Alexandrian Christians has led others to speculate Egypt. But these are only estimates. As Bart Ehrman notes, scholars have long maintained that the document is in fact a composite piece rather than a literary unity. If this is correct, then the different portions of the text may well have been composed in different times and places. The Didache's clearest division is between chapters 6 and 7, but for our purposes, let's also look at the end separately. Part 1 starts off, There are two paths, one of life and one of death, and the difference between the two paths is great. This teaching was known as the two ways. We can see it in other Christian texts like the Epistle of Barnabas, as well as Jewish texts like the Community Rule at Quamran. It follows a similar pattern to what we see in Deuteronomy 11, where Israel has to choose between following God's commands and being blessed, or disobedience and being cursed. It's also very similar to Matthew 7, where Jesus talks about the wide and narrow gates. The teaching of the two ways is immediately followed by a brief summary of the Shema, the greatest commandments, and the golden rule, establishing a basis for Christian morality. To love God with all your heart, soul, and might, to love your neighbor as yourself, and to do unto others as you would have them do unto you. This is then followed by elements of the Sermon on the Mount, and then goes into a list of prohibitions with the common refrain, My Child, representing familial love and guidance to the catechumen. Here's some context about the catechumen. Christianity was initially a Jewish sect, and the language in the Didache reflects that Jewishness, as well as the growing inter-Jewish tensions. Gradually, these Jewish Christian communities gained Gentile converts, and while initially many of these first Gentiles were God-fearers familiar with Judaism, that was increasingly not the case. This led to a need for the catechumenate, a period of theological and moral teaching prior to baptism, and full admittance into the Christian community. This first section of the Didache appears to have been written for moral instructions for these catechumens. Related to these changes, the order of service was also changed. While originally Christians met for the sacred meal and openly conversed after, now preaching occurred first by a learned teacher, followed by the sacred meal for only those who had been baptized. These changes to Christian worship were implemented early, but evolved gradually. As Justo L. Gonzalez notes, While we have some indications that this process was already taking place quite early, the process continued throughout the first three centuries. The second part of the Didache is aimed toward the leaders of the church. Descriptions of the Eucharist vary within the Didache, representing the different changes the Holy Meal was undergoing during this time. It also gives instructions on baptism, giving the first example outside the Bible of the classic Trinitarian formula in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It also discusses itinerant preachers. The early church relied on itinerant preachers to travel to various towns for its evangelical mission. These preachers often visited and encouraged already established Christian communities. However, as Christianity grew, more false teachers appeared with contrary teachings and selfish aims. So before the existence of a clear church hierarchy, the church needed to find ways to discern who was genuine. One of the ways to do this was to provide guidelines for discernment. The Didache states that they are false prophets if they don't practice what they preach, if they teach something contrary to sound teaching, if they stay more than a day or two, if they do not work for their room and board, if they ask for money when they leave, or if in the spirit they ask for food or money rather than asking for you to give those things to the poor. There is also a great insult in this section. Those who preach Christ for their own benefit are called Christ mongers. But if the preacher is genuine, you should support them with your tithes or tithe that money to the poor. The Didache also encourages these communities to elect church leaders who are worthy of the Lord, gentle men who are not fond of money, who are true and approved. This was another way they intended to resist false teachers, by gathering around those teachers they knew to be sound. The final section of the Didache is apocalyptic and short, with the ending missing for both us and the scribe of the oldest copy we have. As Bar Ehrman explains, the scribe of Codex Hierosolimitanus, our only complete text of the Didache, uncharacteristically left the final portion of the page blank after these words. 
without the punctuation he normally used to indicate the end of a book. Early Christianity eagerly expected the parousia, that Christ could return at any moment, and that belief stayed around for centuries. As chapter 16 reads, Be watchful for your life. Do not let your lamps be extinguished or your robes be loosened, but be prepared, for you do not know the hour when the Lord is coming. Gather together frequently, seeking what is appropriate for your souls, for the entire time of your faith will be of no use to you if you are not found perfect at the final moment. For in the final days the false prophets and corruptors of the faith will be multiplied, the sheep will be turned into wolves, and love into hatred. For the lawless and... This has been Ross von Hossen at Saints and Stuff. If you like our videos, feel free to like or subscribe. And if you have an idea for something you'd like to see, just comment below.